as part of my woodworking that I've been developing, I decided that I needed a decent router table. So I shopped, window shopped, researched, looked, um, also decided I couldn't spend four, five, six, seven hundred dollars or more to get um, one. So I found this Bosch uh, on Amazon. It was on sale at Amazon, deal of the day, a couple days ago. So that was convenient for 130. It's like 170 most of the time and 200 in most stores. One thing I liked about it was it's a cabinet style. So it's going to keep some of the dust inside and be able to, to uh, vacuum out of that cabinet. Plus there's also a vacuum attachment to the back um, part of the router. So there's two vac attachments. Um, so it's it's about 15 half by 25. So that's that's 16 by 24 kind of look at things. Uh, the larger ones are 32 by 24. Yeah, I can't afford that. Um, so here's what we got to do. And um, we got to put it together. So we'll go after that. Now, I would have loved to get one that has a plate that is um, adjustable. It's got a router lift. So you adjust the, the height, the depth from on top. But those lifts start at $200. So maybe that's a future thing. So putting the sides together, they've got an included hex wrench. They also suggest using a uh, Phillips screwdriver and a 3 8 um, socket nut. Um, you can't get the sides mixed up. Um, you'd think so, but actually they've got the screw holes are actually at slightly different heights on each side. So you can only put one on to a certain side. They also have, you don't want to get them mixed up, which is probably why they do that, is because of the drill outs for um, hinges hinges for the door. And I don't know what else goes there. I'll figure that out later. The bottom comes next. There are going to be five screws. And we use the side of the base that has a countersunk drill out part for it. I haven't put these in all the, all the way um, so that these screws will sit below the surface as opposed to the ones on the side which actually stick slightly above the surface. Next is this bracket to hold the switch. It goes on the bottom of the top plate and they are recessed screw heads. Now that the bracket's on, we screw the switch on. So getting those two screws in to hold the switch to the plate, not too easy, because you have to hold a nut on the back side here. Well, this wasn't too bad because it's outside, but this one, you're trying to come up underneath and hold this nut in place while you put a screw in. So. I got it eventually. Next step is to attach the top to the uh, sides, back, bottom, to the, you know, basically to the cabinet. And two of these go in the miter slot. So if the miter slot is in there, take it out. Screw the miter slot in. There are some counter, three countersunk screws that have nuts on the bottom side. I am noticing something interesting about this miter slot. It's an inch wide and I'm used to seeing things that are three quarters inch so I'm wondering about that. Now we're attaching the door and the diagram actually has the door attaching differently than what they have set up because they already attached the hinge to the door and they have pre-drilled three holes in there for this flappy part. Well, the way the diagram shows it is that the flappy part attaches to the door and the bigger part attaches to the inside of the frame. So, since they already attached the hinge to the door, I'm just going to, and they got three holes in the drill, I'm just going to attach it the way they've got it set up and ignore the diagram. They give a hint that to help the screws go in easier to add some uh, beeswax to them. And I have some mineral oil and beeswax, 
And with these tiny screws for the door, you know, that's such a tiny screw head. Um, I'm doing that and that is helping because the first one I didn't do that on and it was tough to get that in. I was worried about stripping. So this magnetic catch goes over on this side so that it will catch the door at the right spot. Also, it's got, you know, these tiny little screws. So again, put some beeswax on them. Now we're going to work a little bit on the fence, which is already partially put together. There's the boards that can slide open more uh, based on here. Uh, we're going to attach a vacuum hose adapter. They have this plastic um, cover that just bolts on and it's to go above the router bit so it's adjustable you know, all this height so that it doesn't throw um, a lot of dust and parts up and out so trying to contain the things the fence attaches just with a couple of bolts and these twist knobs you can take the fence off all at once uh, because of this little J channel this is big enough to drop the head of the bolt in then you push them over and then push up and they slide in the track and they stay there the feather boards um, need to be assembled slightly differently because one's for the track on the um, top and the other is for the track on the fence so the one on the top has these this track thing to it that you put on it and for the um, fence it just has spacers and that the heads will hold inside of there mounting the router to the plate so here's my router underneath there and there, this plate is designed with a whole bunch of holes for a whole bunch of different routers and types and styles and different size screws my router just mounts with three screws from above, countersunk, and it's just below. Now mounting this plate, that thing, there are these leveling screws, four of them, one each quarter, which we uh, screw up, screw down to get the plate level onto the face and then there's four other screws that would then secure it in place. I am using my um, combination square because it's wide enough to go from edge of table to edge of table and I'm pretty sure it's a pretty flat edge on it. Uh, if I had a longer one I'd use a longer one but I just have a 12 inch one. I'm also running a board across here to make sure that it's not going to catch at any lips. In addition with this board, if this if it's not level, and there's a high side here or here, then I could teeter-totter this board around there like a seesaw. And mine is not doing that. Also, you know, if I want to worry about this edge, take it back this way, pressing down, nothing catches. Take it this way, nothing catches. Again, running it back and forth. And I know this board is square because I've planed this board before. Because um, I used it for other things. So, there's getting this thing flat and level, nice and easy uh, sliding of the boards. Now, I am wondering about this track because I read everything talking about three quarter inch um, miter tracks and three quarter inch miter gauges and this track is an inch wide and this track is three quarter three inch I know because I bought it to use for something else and it actually fits right inside which is interesting so maybe I'll make a miter gauge using this track or other places just talked about taking a piece of wood and um, planing it down to fit in the track that you need. So, I'll work on those. But there's my table. It goes together pretty well. It takes a little bit of time because it's a lot of pieces and parts.
I should have taken a picture or video of this before, but this switch actually has two plugs on the back, one for the router and one so you can also plug your shop back, your um, dust collection into it. So you turn those on and off at the same time. I'm just going to plug my router into it, not my um, shop back. And I'm going to tape over the one of the plugs because I don't like the idea, idea of having an open plug with lots of dust in around because there's a bunch of dust that's going to collect in here as well as get thrown out here. Um, and that's why they have a port in the back for a two and a half inch um, dust collection. So you actually have two places for dust collection. You've got the hole in the back there to stick in and then you have the back of the fence. I will probably just hook up to the fence and then just vacuum out the inside you know as periodically as I get done so there we are again router table or you know cheap router tables inexpensive router tables they're not the easiest to adjust the height of something you literally got to get in here and adjust I'd love to be able to afford one of those plates that has height adjustment from like a winch or a screw up top um, but those start at $200 just for the plate and unfortunately, I'm not quite sure one of those plates will fit in here, but that's something I'll look at in the future. One of the reasons I bought the cabinet style um, router table was because it does a decent job of collecting some of the dust, uh, the trimmings, and I tried putting the vacuum, you know, in that port, but it didn't do anything. It didn't pull anything out. So that's okay, as long as it contains it, and then I just uh, shop back it out. 